This new Titan build lets you resist a stupid amount of incoming damage. You'll be able to survive things you really shouldn't survive, be able to use solar abilities infinitely with a really fast cooldown, have constant health regeneration, cause complete chaos by chaining explosive damage while improving weapon DPS with almost full uptime, and a bunch more, which is why in this video, we're going to be going over this new build, the setup, your optimised loadout for endgame PvE, and all that good stuff. We'll also be using one of the new helmet exotics and the new helmet mods to make our source of becoming charger light worth using again. Now this video is sponsored by Oea. They offer Destiny 2 Silver at a cheaper rate. If you're interested in that, see the link below along with my discount code. And be sure to comment what builds you're currently using. And if you have a build you'd like me to check out for a possible build video in the future, feel free to leave a dim link below and I'll approve it when I see it. But now guys, as always, without further delay, rate, comment, subscribe and share. And now let's cause complete chaos. Before we get straight into the build, if you enjoy these sort of videos and you want to see more, the full playlist of builds is below, and I'll be adding a lot more to that playlist in the time to come. So with this new Titan Solar build, you will be able to resist a lot of damage in most mid to end game PvE content. It may be slightly challenging to use in something like a Grandmaster Nightfall, but it will still provide you that extra support and survivability, which is really what you want in end game PvE. Now Protective Light had a nerf this season, so it only provides you now with a 10% damage reduction compared to the previous 50%. Now this mod may or may not seem worth using for you, but with this build and the way it works, using protective light to me is actually worth using and I'll get to that in just a moment, but I will say this right now, this build is the only build in the game that I'll use protective light with, as it's simply not worth the 10% reduction in general. Now the reason I'm using protective light with this build is because when you become critically wounded, you'll drop a sunspot that will give you increased weapon damage and you'll start to regenerate health slowly. But at the same time, when you become critically wounded, protective light will activate and stay activated even when you're regenerating health, so having protective light with the health regen simultaneously, as well as getting health back when using your abilities on adds. This in my opinion, makes it worth using and makes up for the nerf of protective light, as when you're in, say, a GM, your shields break, you get some warrior, take cover with protective light and the shields regenerating, that may just save you big time. But give me your thoughts on whether or not you would rather use protective light or a different mod with this build. So the way this build works, Firstly, you'll get a few kills rapidly with your weapons to generate an orb of power, like pre-nerfed masterwork weapons. Then picking up that orb will give us a charge of light stack. You'll then go about your activity as normal, killing everything, spamming abilities and using sunspots to benefit you by giving you your abilities back faster. Then you can just either stay in your sunspot or move to another one you generate for your ability regen. And if you become critically wounded, which will most likely happen in a lot of endgame PvE, you will drop a sunspot. All of these sunspots will give you some warrior, which means you should constantly have your health regenerating non-stop while also having increased DPS because of the Sun Warrior buff. If you can stay in the Sunspot, that's even better, but with this build, you will be able to take a lot of damage before dying. And of course, you wouldn't just sit there letting Gad shoot you until you die. You'll be shooting back and eventually throwing abilities to get more health back on top. It's a great build for Titans to solo Legend of Master Lost sectors and have more survivability. Now getting into the setup of the build, and as always there will be dim links in these videos, so you can see that setup of the build, that link will be below, but for the setup, starting with the loadout as always, you're not restricted, so you can use what you want, but I'd recommend a good primary weapon to deal with champions. For me, I like this new auto rifle, the scout rifle and the pulse rifle, which will stop all the champions as these weapon types have the champion mod this season. For my energy, I'm using the glaive weapon and then a galahorn for my DPS. This is my loadout for doing mid to end game PvE as a solo player, but now with your primary weapon or energy, or whatever weapon is your ad clearing one, make sure the element of it, so for my auto it is stasis, make sure that this matches the helmet siphon mod, as it's the new easiest way to become charger light, but we'll get to that shortly. The exotic we are using is the new Laurelly Splendor Helm, I hope I've said that right, but this is the new Titan Exotic and this will buff our sunspots. You can get this by completing the Legendary Campaign on your Titan or farm out the Legend of Master Lost Sectors. It reads, when you have some warrior, your sunspots heal you, when you're critically wounded, create a sunspot at your location. With this exotic, we're going to be using the Bottom Tree Sunbreaker subclass, Code of the Siegebreaker, as this also comes with some warrior, and passing through a sunspot causes your grenade and melee abilities to recharge faster, 
and your super to last longer, while also increasing your weapon DPS. We will also be able to restore our health, grenade and melee energy when getting kills with our solar abilities, and the Sun Warrior kills will leave a deadly sunspot in their wake. So one sunspot is giving you pretty much infinite abilities, health on every ability kill, increased weapon damage, and automatically regenerating your health passively, which is quite insane, and pairing this with protective light is going to make it even better, regardless of the nerf. So for the mods, the very first thing you'll want is taking charge. If you don't like taking charge, you can use any other mod that you'd prefer to become charge light, but with taking charge, we will need a way to generate orbs for ourselves since the Master Work Orbs nerf, so we will be using a new mod called Siphon, and this will act like Masterwork Weapons pre-nerf, so it will generate orbs on multi-kills. You will have to adjust the mod to your weapon element, so if you're using an arc weapon, use an arc siphon. If you're using a solar weapon, you can use this one here as it matches our subclass, but use the one that you do need. Next, we have Protective Light to use those Charge Light stacks on. If you don't want Protective Light or feel it's not worth using, then you can go with another mod of your choice. I tend to like Argent Ordnance to buff my galley's DPS, so that would be a good alternative. But for our normal mod, starting with a helmet, we have the Siphon mod to generate the orbs, our Heavy Ammo Finder mod, and then for the Gauntlets, you can slot on your Champion mod or mods that you do need. Then for the chest, we are running the Thermoshock Plating. This is a pretty good one as you get two resistant mods in one, and you can get this from the Artifact for this season only. And with this, we also have our Rocket Reserves. For the legs, we are running the Glaive Scavenger and Rocket Scavenger, but you can make the adjustments you need for the weapon types that you're using. And then lastly for the class, I've got Lucent Finisher to spawn heavy ammo when using a finisher on a champion, which will be perfect for your Master and Grandmaster runs. If you're using Glaives and a teammate has the mod on, you can use this suppressing Glaive mod instead. Now for your stats, max out Recovery and Discipline. Recovery will help you recover your shields faster, which is what you want in both PvE and PvP, and Discipline will help you get a grenade back quicker to spam your abilities, because when you get kills with your grenade, you will activate the Sun Warrior which will heal you. Now for the artifact, this is what it looks like so far, but one mod you could use is the Unstoppable Melee, but for me it's really not worth it and I'd rather use the Unstoppable Glaive instead. Now just quickly here, I want to go through all the exotic weapons that would work well with this build. So for the primary slot, you can use Bad Juju if you want fast supers, Arbalist to stop anti-barrier champions, or the new exotic SMG or Wither Horde. For your energy, you can use Divinity, Limon, Ariana's Risk Runner and Tiku's Divination. And then for your heavy, your best options are Sleeper and Galahorn. But a Parasite is also a good choice that is insane in PvE, but I haven't yet got that and tested it myself. For your exotic armor, your alternatives are Phoenix Cradle and Path of the Burning Steps, but you'll want to use solo weapons if you use that one. So this build is perfect for solo players that want to complete endgame PvE content on their own, or as a team. This new Titan build is best used in things like Legend and Master Lost Sectors, but you can use it in Nightfalls as well, because I did use a similar build like this last season in my Grandmaster Nightfall runs, so I strongly recommend giving this build a try if you haven't already. But guys, that is all for this new Titan build in Destiny 2 Witch Queen Season of the Risen. Next, as always, be sure to check out the playlist for more top insane best builds in Destiny 2 Season 16. That playlist link is below, but for now, whatever you guys get up to, have a good one, because I'll see you guys very soon for the next build video. Because Hunters, I'm coming for you next. Peace out.